I'm Pastor Paul Marzon, and welcome to Session 5 of the F-Bomb series, The Forgiveness Offensive. Today we're going to be talking about how forgiveness is a choice. How forgiveness is a choice. I'm going to be referencing some quotes from the book by Dr. Robert Enright, where forgiveness is a choice. He talks about it. He's a noted psychologist, um, best-selling author, and he reminds us that sometimes we don't forgive because of our own choosing. So if you're choosing to forgive this day, I'm going to help you think about the best ways to do that. Let's begin with the Word of God. I'm going to share with you a story from John chapter 21, 15 through 19. And many of you know this story by heart, and you've heard it many times when I've preached on Sunday mornings. But it's a story of reconciliation, of forgiveness, and really for a, a person to come to grips with forgiving themselves. And so here's the story. It's about an encounter when Jesus has resurrected, he comes back, and if you know the story of Peter, he had denied Christ three times. And so when Jesus was being tortured and being hauled away to go for crucifixion, there were other people that accused Peter of being his friend. And Peter said, no, I didn't know the man. Now think about this. He's out fishing. Peter is out there catching and he's throwing out his nets. And all of a sudden Jesus walks up. Says, throw your nets on the other side. He catches a load of fish and he realizes, oh, that's the Savior. That's the one I betrayed. That's the one I hurt. And then he comes ashore and they sit down together and they begin to talk and eat. And then when it says that when they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. He said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. A third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him for the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, you were, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted to. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would be glorified God. But then he said to him, follow me, follow me. You see, what is happening there is this process of letting go of forgiveness, of releasing some of the things that were taking place. And forgiveness is a choice and it's a kind of a process like we talked about before. And so I want to walk you through the phases of that process that doesn't necessarily happen right away. And as you enter into these phases and ask these questions, you may be in a different place today than you were last week, but I want you to think about how you move through this. The first phase is kind of uncovering your anger or your hurt. It's releasing those emotions like we talked about last week. Think about this. How has your anger affected your health? Many times we know that when you're angry, we, we retain a lot of stress and a lot of hurt. And they've actually shown that the indication of, of heart attack and stroke is 25% higher for those that aren't unable to release those kinds of anxieties. Have you been obsessed about the injury or the offense? Is it something you think about a lot? Does it preoccupy your time and your mind? Do you compare your situation with that of the offender? In other words, maybe you were hurt by somebody and you go, well, you know, they don't deserve to be happy. They don't deserve this. Has the injury caused a permanent change in your life? I know that... Um, when uh, a few years ago, I was uh, driving in the winter, and I uh, um, was just with my family going out to get a Christmas tree and enjoying the day and having fun, and we were just laughing and giggling, and all of a sudden a car comes down the road. And it, it's driving too fast, and it's in icy conditions, and I could see this beginning to lose control, so I pull over to the side of the road as far as I can. But I see he begins to start to spin right in front of us. And even though I pulled over to the, the shoulder as far as I could, he came across this, the, our side of the road, and he hit right in the driver's door. And the mirror in the side of my car broke off and sh shattered through the glass and hit me in the side of the head, causing a major concussion and, and really permanent damage to, me to my physiology, to the way I speak, to the way I think and process. It actually lowered my IQ um, that I found out from the neurologist. And it caused a permanent change in my life. And it was difficult for me to, to come to grips with that. And to not only realize that I was angry and I was hurt and I was upset. And so I had to process that, the physical problem I dealt with, as well as the emotional and the scars that I had received um, internally. And that wasn't easy. And that was part of my, my healing and my forgiveness, of working through that. 
And sometimes those injuries can change your worldview. You begin to think differently because of being injured or hurt. And so you have to ask yourself, how are you processing those things? At the time you do get through that part, if you can get through the anger and the hurt and begin to admit those things, then phase two is deciding to forgive. It's making that conscious decision to decide to forgive. If you're taking notes, in phase 2A is decide what you have been doing hasn't worked. <laughs> decide what you've been doing hasn't worked. In other words, sometimes when you don't forgive, you realize, you know what, this isn't working. Harboring this hurt or, or not letting go is actually making my life miserable. So you have to be willing to begin the forgiveness process. You have to begin that process of deciding to forgive. And that's not always easy. If once you decide to forgive and you make that conscious decision, then you're into phase three. And that's really working on the forgiveness. You begin to work toward understanding, work toward compassion. And many times when we're working toward understanding and we're working toward compassion, we begin to think things from that other person's perspective. I started to think about that other person and, and I begin to hear his story and I, I realized that he had a story. He was on his way someplace and he was going fast because he was late. He was you know, concerned about somebody else in his family and wanted to get there as soon as possible. He wasn't thinking about the road conditions. He was thinking about where he needed to be. He never intended to go across the road and to injure anybody else. And so once I understood his story and understood what he was doing, I was able to, to accept the pain a little bit differently. And once you accept the pain and begin to understand that, then you need to think about how can you give the offender a gift? Now you may say to yourself, well, what are you, crazy? <laughs> that person injured you. But a gift comes from transformed feelings. It comes from saying, you know what, I've released this, now I'm okay to, to reach out to somebody else. One example of this is in this book, Forgiveness is a Choice, he talks about an incest survivor and how she showed generosity by sending her dad a birthday card. My wife, Pastor Deb, I remember when she was really struggling with her biological father because he had really left her most of the time of her life, was never there for her, was an alcoholic and had several wives. But when he was dying, she visited him in the hospital. That was a gift of reconciliation, of forgiveness. Likewise, the man who hit me in the car, I wrote him a note. I let it go. I never sued him. I never sued the insurance company. I dealt with the injury as best as I can and, and, and moved on. That's not always easy. Phase four, discovery, dis excuse me, discovery and release from the emotional prison. Discovery and release from the emotional prison. So once you kind of figure out those first three phases and you, you begin to discover the meaning of suffering. And sometimes the meaning of suffering allows you to strengthen your relationship with God and others. One of the stories he tells in this book, and Forgiveness is a Choice, is he talks about Jewish prisoners. And he says that some of them were able to deal with the, the undignified lifestyle by doing simple tasks each and every day. They'd find courage and dignity in those little things of life. He tells one story about four men who knew they were sentenced to die. They were going to be taken to the gas chamber. So what do you think they'd be doing in those final hours? Maybe fretting, walking around, being angry, cursing? No. These Jewish prisoners got together and they began to darn socks. In other words, to sew up those little holes that had happened in their socks. And you think, well, why would you bother to do such a thing when you're about ready to die? Because they did that each and every day. They'd help fix the socks of their own feet and of the feet of others. And they said, well, why should we stop doing what gives us dignity in life. You see, when you discover the meaning of suffering, you begin to hold on to those things that give you dignity. You also have to discover your need for forgiveness. It's not just about the other person and releasing them. You're releasing yourself whenever you discover your need for forgiveness. You also have to discover you're not alone. In other words, you're not the only one going through hurt. <laughs> Sometimes we feel like it's only happening to me. No, there are a lot of people that have been hurt, a lot of people who have been injured. And you have to begin to realize you're not in this alone. And as you start to do that, you begin to discover the purpose of your life. You begin to unfold maybe that next chapter because you've gone through this negative experience. And here's the really good one. You eventually discover the freedom of forgiveness. In other words, when you release that prisoner, you begin to realize that you were the, really the one that was in prison and that now you are set free. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for the power of forgiveness and for the reminder that forgiveness is a choice. Help us this day to work through these phases of forgiveness, to, to walk forward in the ways that we need to, to allow that other person to be released, but also to release ourselves. 
Help us to continue to remember that forgiveness is a choice and that as we make that conscious decision, we're able to have that sense of peace that you would like us to have. I pray this day, if there's somebody listening to this tape or watching this video, that somehow, if they're struggling with forgiveness, that they would make the choice to forgive and work through the process, the, the difficult process to move forward. I pray this day that as they're listening to this tape, they may think of a name right now of someone who injured them or hurt them or somehow did something inappropriate to them, that they'd be able to work through that pain and work through that forgiveness. I pray for these things in the name of your Son, the Forgiver, the one who forgave us of all of our sins, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.